welcome to Sail Sam Point's instructional rigging videos. The purpose of these videos is to refresh sailors on how to rig our open boating sailboats. These videos are intended for people with sailing experience as they do not replace in-person training. Thank you for watching and happy sailing! Hello, I'm Jack here at Sail Sandpoint and today I'm going to show you how to rig a Hobie Wave. And so, today we are rigging Hobie Wave number 11 and my key here is to make sure that I match my sail to my hull number. So since I'm rigging hull 11, I'm searching for sail number 11. Now thankfully at the top of every sail in Sharpie we have the number, so this is sail 11. And so let's take it over to our boat now. Now that I've made sure my sail and hull match, the next thing I want to do is I want to attach my wheels to my boat. Luckily my wheels are already right here. And all I need to do is take this line and I want to make this wheel as tight and snug to the boat as physically possible. It's going to make moving our boat considerably easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line and I'm going to pull it taut. I'm going to run it up and around this part here. This part's called our chain plate. I'm going to do one full wrap around. I'm going to make what I call a highwayman's hitch where I make a bite and I pull it through here. And just to be extra secure, I like to pull one more bite through like that. And this secures this wheel. And now it's really snug up against the hull of the boat. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I pull it as snug as I possibly can. And I'm going once again around that chain plate. And I make a bite where I take the middle of the line and I pull it through that loop I made. And then to complete our highwayman's hitch, we pull that through again. Now our wheels are secure. The key to moving a Hobie Wave effectively is picking it up and getting the majority of the weight of the boat to rest on my set of wheels. It turns out if I do this right, I'm going to let my boat roll forward. When I'm balancing my boat correctly, I can hold this by two fingers and just walk with my boat. I'm going to use both hands, as I recommend that you all do, but it should not be the weight on you. The weight should be on the wheels. And as I make my way towards the beach, what I need to think about now is figuring out where the wind is coming from and getting my bow pointed in the general direction of the wind. So today we have a southerly, meaning the wind's coming from this direction, which means the bow of my boat, the front of my boat, is pointing to the south, which is over there. But were the wind to be a northerly from this direction, I'd have the bow of my boat pointing to the north. If it was an easterly, I'd have it pointing straight ahead. The tricky one is the westerly, where we'd have to go stern in first. But luckily here at Sail Snap Point, that doesn't happen all too often. The wind's coming from the south. I turn my boat most of the way to the south, and this is gonna make raising the mast easy. And the next thing I can do is I can untie my wheels, where I pop my highwayman's hitch off. I untie it, and I do the same on the other side. And now that both of those are untied, all I have to do is pick up the back of my boat slide it forward and it slides gracefully off the wheels and now it's sitting down ready to get rigged and I can leave the wheels up against the fence for whoever wants to use the boat next or when I come in off the water. All right so we've successfully gotten our Hobie Wave onto the beach with its bows facing towards the wind and now I'm ready to get my sail up. Thankfully whoever put the sail away last ruled it starting at the foot and ending at the head or the top of our sail. And this is going to make the process considerably easier for me, so I don't have to unroll my sail. All I have to do is uncleat this line, which is one of the ends of my main halyard. Halyards being the line that pull up our sail. And the other end of our main halyard, the line that pulls up our sail, is here with the hook. So the first step is getting the hook on the sail. Now before we get our sail up, there's a few concepts we need to introduce. The first is a concept called a bolt rope. Essentially in the front of my sail there's this very thick edge and that's going to get slid into the slot and this keeps our sail up against the mast. The second is the swage connecting the wire pit part of our main halyard to the rope part of our main halyard. At the top of our mast there's a fork, essentially two prongs that look like this. And when this halyard gets all the way up the swage needs to sit in the prongs sort of like this and it holds the halyard in place so the entire weight of the sail is in, on this metal fitting and not actually on the cleat at the bottom. If the weight is on the cleat at the bottom, eventually what will happen is our halyard rope part and our metal part will separate. All right, now the first thing I'll do is get my bolt rope fed into the front of my sail. 
What's really helpful to do with you two people is have one person make sure that bolt rope is always going into the sail while the other person hoists the halyard. But I can sort of do this by myself where I'm keeping an eye on the bolt rope, making sure it's going in as I pull up my sail. And if the bolt rope looks like it's getting jammed or caught or slipping out, I'll take a second, I'll readjust, and then I'll continue pulling up my sail, just like so. So make sure that bolt rope continues to run smoothly as my sail goes up and up. Now my sail has hit the top of the mast, but the next thing I need to do is make sure I get that little bit of wire into the fork at the top. Now that I'm in that fork at the top, even if I were to let go of my main halyard and I don't have it secured anywhere, I can pull in the bottom of my sail just like so. And my sail doesn't go anywhere because it's in that fork at the top, it's secured there. But just as a secondary means of precaution, I'm gonna tie what's known as a cleat hitch right here. The way we tie a cleat hitch is we're gonna do a full wrap around our cleat, like so. We're gonna go across and under, and the shape we're looking for, I like to use the idea of two rivers under one bridge. So these two lines are gonna end up parallel, like so, and this sits on top, creating a bridge, and that's the shape we're looking for. And that's how we know we've tied a successful cleat hitch. But the rest of our main halyard can get coiled up and tucked away in this front pat pouch so it's out of reach and it's not dragging in the water. I'm going to repeat this process on this line right here. But first, I'm going to go through the pulley right here. So I go around the bottom of our cleat, back up through the pulley, and then around the bottom again, giving me a three to one purchase. I pull down on my sail. I go a full wrap around across, under, and I'm looking for that shape of two rivers under one bridge. Pulling it tight, just like so. This line's really short, so I can just sort of leave it there. The final line I have to attach to my sail is my main sheet, and it's this blue one right here, sitting on my trampoline. What I can do is make sure I'm out of the cam cleat right here. I can unsecure it from the trampoline. I can grab the corner of my sail, and all I have to do is get the hook into this grommet. Now, if I'm pulling my main sheet, pulling from this end through the cam cleat, I can pull my sail in. And then the way this mechanism works is in order to get the line to release, I have to pull down out of the jaws. It's sort of like two knuckles biting together. Pulling it down out of the jaws, and then it releases no problem. Pulling it in, and if I want to let go of this line but keep it in the same spot, I just make sure it's in those teeth. And I can let go, and the line stays there and then to release it once again, pulling it out of the teeth, and it releases like so. The final few things I want to mention about this boat are how the rudders work. The rudders and this tiller and tiller crossbar are what allows our boat to get driven and steered. So essentially the way this works is, in order to get my rudders down, this bar needs to go towards this back crossbar. So I can, right now I'm pushing, but for you guys it'll be a pulling motion towards you, and it pushes the rudder down and locks it in place. If I wasn't on the beach, it will go all the way down into a straight down position. Same on this side. And then as you're coming in back to our beach, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the, this tiller crossbar and pull it up like that, and it locks the rudder in its upright position. And the same on the other side. Now the last thing I want you guys to examine before you go sailing is this right here. This is our stern plug. It's a little piece of plastic that keeps our hulls watertight. But if for some reason there was water to end up in our hull, it allows us to drain them at the end of the day. Now next, I'm gonna demonstrate the launching and retrieving process of the Hobie Wave. But first, I need my life jacket. Let's go sailing. So I'm gonna begin pushing out my boat. The key thing to remember here is that I can't get my rudders down until I'm in deep enough water that they can swim in perfectly down without hitting the bottom. So I'm gonna start pushing my boat. I'm gonna be very conscious of the concrete ramp right here. I'm gonna push my boat out. I might not have gotten far enough to get it going, but. I'm waiting till I get far enough out to get my rudder locked in place. I can start pulling in my sail. And now that I'm far enough out, I can get my rudders all the way down. I'm gonna do one jibe and then head back to shore. Now as I'm approaching, 
I want to be conscious that once again the bottom is going to come into play and I'm going to have to pull up my rudders when I get really close to land. And as I get close, I'm going to let my sail all the way out and pull out my rudders in three, two, one. My rudders are up. I glide onto shore and I can pull my boat up. And the next thing I'll do is I'll grab my wheels and then I'll drop my sail. This process becomes a little bit trickier if the wind is coming from the east because we just can't really drop our sails facing into the wind if we launch and come in this way. I'll leave my main sheet there. I'll begin undoing the lines I originally used to get my sail up. Key to lowering our sail without skying our main halyard, meaning getting the hook uncut from, uncut from the top of our sail and losing it is keeping tension continuously in the line as we drop the sail. The first thing we need to do is get that our line and our swage out of the hook at the top. I can do this by pulling down and keeping tension here and then pulling away and that gets it in the hook and then I'll slowly lower my sail here and it gets lowered no problem at all. And then with two people you can have one person lowering the sail and one person rolling or I'm going to just roll the sail or lower the sail completely and then I'll roll on the hull of my boat. And then the next thing I do is I make sure not to lose these lines. This hook can go on the back of my mast and this line can get tied in that cleat hitch we tied earlier where we're going a full wrap around, across, under, and around the top. So we have two rivers under one bridge right here. Now the reason we roll from the foot is if you guys remember back earlier when we raised our sail, it's very easy to raise our sail when it's rolled from the bottom of the sail because all I have to do is I can attach my halyard onto the head of my sail once it's fully rolled. I want to make sure to keep my battens flat and roll as tightly as possible. I've made it all the way here. At this point, if you want, you can walk your sail back to the warehouse. If you've been told by an open boating structure to leave your boat on the beach, you can do so. But if I want to fully put away my boat, what I'll need to do is reattach my wheels. And this can be a little tricky, but essentially what we have to do is we have to jump the boat up onto the wheels and then pull our boat all the way back to its slip. I can pick my boat up, I can roll it forward, get it on the wheels, and now once again, I want to get my wheels as tight as possible. This line is coming straight down. Once I go, and I'm going around that boat rope, getting it as tight as possible. One wrap around, through my loop, and I do it one more time, and that makes our highwayman's hitch, and I'll repeat the process on the other side. One loop, and two loops, and now my wheels are secure. And now I can just back boat 11 right back into the spot where it started at the beginning of the day. And one big key thing to remember is that one, we're resting on the correct bunks. So all of the holes are resting on this piece of wood and that the rudders aren't caught on it, anything. That concludes our Hobie, de Hobie Wave demo of rigging, launching, retrieving, and de-rigging. Thank you guys so much for joining us here at Sail Sandpoint. We hope to see you out soon.